guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military industrial complex. Okay, welcome back everyone. Thanks for listening to uh, Anonymous Bites Back. Uh, we have uh, Willem Engel back on. It's the third time already. Um, ready to give us some uh, updates about uh, the situation. Uh, we're, going, we're going to talk about our dystopian future or how to avoid that and uh, upcoming protests and uh, yeah, as much as possible uh, in regards to information. Uh, we have about an hour, I think a little less, but uh, just to uh, do our best. Hey, so uh, <laughs> welcome back, uh, uh, Willem. Um, Thank you very much. Yeah. So shortly before the show, we already discussed about uh, uh, Romania and Austria introducing uh, yeah, new restrictive measures, right? A uh, new curfew thing. Yes, but uh, what now is the the catch, so to say, is of course these measures will be mainly in place uh, for the unvaccinated, for the unclean. Yeah, yeah. So they're now like aiming for a like, clear divide between vaccinated and unvaccinated, and uh, they're going. Go, go yeah, it's like ostracizing or or, or segregating. And, and that is uh, already uh, a very clear violation of a numerous uh, of numerous international treaties. Um, so I'm I'm actually, and it sounds strange because it's a horrible thing to do, but I don't believe that that will hold up. I think that is so far from uh, what people have been told is uh, the right thing in a democracy. Um, of course, we have seen crazy things, so uh, I'm sure they will push for it, and I'm sure that a lot of people will allow it. But I'm also quite sure that um, even more people will oppose it, uh, and it will be uh, around or over the whole spectrum. I believe that some people who firmly believe in getting vaccinated or firmly believe in the rule of law will stand up because they feel this is unjust. Yeah, and uh, well, it's now about a month in that we are in, a, in the Netherlands are dealing with the whole QR code system. I mean, they introduced it on September 25. Now we're almost a month in now. Um, how do you see? Uh, how did you see society change now? Are, are, are the people like uh, resisting? We, we know the waku waku thing, right? The big protest and all these things. Um, how, yeah. How's the situation with other? Uh, so there is the the very uh, obvious visual protest, and uh, Waku Waku was uh, was one of the of the the fronts. Another one was the court case of Maas uh, and Enteling, I believe her name is. So two lawyers who who sued the state uh, over this QR code because it is clearly discriminatory and it's a breach of Article One. Of the uh, of the Constitution, uh, but also of um, what is it, uh, Article 14 of the uh, European 
European Treaty for Human Rights. So um, bodily autonomy. It, no, the, it's not. Uh, I mean the the article against discrimination. Okay, okay, okay. So, so of course, some other rights are uh, are uh, under pressure, but this is specifically about discrimination. And um, if you look at those at those articles, they do not have any sub article. Um, containing the rules of uh, encroachment on that uh, uh, on that right, and I think that is because this is such a fundamental right. A lot of other uh, fundamental rights are actually derived or uh, derivative of this right. Um, so there has never been a, a provision been made in these treaties because it's, it is inalienable. This is one of the rights that under no circumstances you can discriminate and there is a very good reason for this so if you look at uh, the law system uh, especially what happened with all the international treaties after the second world war and um, that was a very strong and stark reminder of what happens if you take it easy or if you uh, if you let law be interpreted by people who have a certain ideology because we all know that the the law system but also the church uh, broke down in morality and ethics uh, during the second world war and that led to an 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 at that time an unimaginable crime against humanity or crimes against humanity so this is one of the reasons why this is such a, a strong uh, a, a strong uh, fundamental human right and uh, it is uh, atrocious and I, I feel that the judges who, who because there were three judges in this case eh? there was a, a judge who denied the right to protest this that was uh, 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 not on the civil law but on their uh, on their um, what is it called criminal law uh, yeah. oh, you have criminal law civil law and uh, policy law i don't know if it's if, if it's the right word but uh, that's a different court then there was the the fundamental question of uh, mass law um, against the the state uh, and there was the the, the other uh, one also against policy law against the closure of waku waku and all these judges uh, squandered our fundamental human rights so in in two cases it was about discrimination and there was a lot of talk about the feeling of being discriminated but i want to point out that medical status qualifies as other status so if you look at uh, if you look at the law it's very clear that uh, other status includes uh, medical status and that there's been a few cases that uh, that show that um, I believe 2013, 16, and 19 in Greece and uh, two in Russia. Um, so there's no debate there. there there's already legislation or, or uh, jurisprudence. And uh, that makes it so obvious that, that we are not living in a, in a democracy, but also not in a, in a constitutional uh, country, because the constitution, in effect, is, is non-applicable. Uh, yeah, I, I, I know that in, in, the, in the Netherlands we're dealing with a unique situation. It's different in Belgium and, and Germany. Is that when the government like creates new laws, they don't have to uh, test it uh, against uh, the, the, the constitution? Well, actually, in Belgium they do, and in, and in, in Germany uh, too. Um, I've read I've read about uh, the, the the mass case and, and the, the judge also like they, they base on on the suggestion that the government says it is temporary and necessary right but w what I'm noticing is that they are uh, just uh, yeah so so with the, those two things yeah. first of all there there is no um, law or there is no article or sub article that says that it is possible so there is a there is a, a, a judge judging on something that he is not allowed to judge yeah? if you if you look at uh, uh, article 14 which which goes for all european countries and also protocol 12 it just says there is no uh, exception to it 
Yeah. Um, but then coming to um, the effectiveness um, uh, and the necessity. So if you uh, encroach upon uh, human rights, then uh, you have to abide by certain standards. Uh, first of all, in our constitution, then you have to go through, um, I believe it's Article 103 or 104, uh, that, that uh, takes you to the system of uh, emergency uh, uh, law. Now, that was not done, and this was one of the reasons why we won the, the, the court case against uh, the curfew. And it's still not being done. So, the, the, the legal route is also illegal that, is, that has been taken. Then you go to the next step, uh, then you have to prove the effectiveness, and you have to prove the emergency, so also the necessity, and you have to do that by measuring what that measure uh, has an effect and does it do what you want it to do. So in this case, you want to protect uh, public health does it protect public health? That's the, that's that is a very logical question, of course, um, and all scientists agree it doesn't. It is completely useless, and the main reason why is that um, vaccination, what they call vaccination, what is in 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 reality gene therapy, mm -hmm. does not deliver sterile immunity. What it means is that you can still get an infection and that you can still pass it on. So the chain of transmission is not broken with this QR code. And then you can have all the discussions that it might help a little bit. The, the whole point is that it doesn't work. So there is no point in proving a, a kind of effectiveness. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. So that takes away uh, the, the way to measure it. That takes away the proportionality. Um, and then you come to another point, uh, the subsidiarity. So have they looked for another way? And there they, their argument is, or their idea is that if you uh, would do the other thing, is that you reinstate the one and a half meter. Of course, that is a, a false dilemma because it is not uh, one or the other. The, the, the third or the fourth scenario that uh, was absent is what happens when you do nothing? What happens if you let it go and you have no QR code, you have no uh, social distance? So because that was not investigated, everything is false. Because there's no, uh, you, you, you cannot measure the effect and you cannot measure the subsidiarity. So in this case, it is amazing that judges uh, let themselves be used or are actually of that ideological school and criminalize themselves. Eh? Let, let's not make a mistake. These things are crimes against humanity. And it sounds very, uh, very grim or very heavy. But why is it called Article 1? Why is it in every, in every international treaty that discrimination is not allowed? Because we know what happens when you allow discrimination. This is opening the, the road to genocide. It's very clear that that is that is the the dark side of discrimination. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And when it eventually becomes clear that all these measures didn't help at all uh, and that they were wrong, and it is slowly already becoming clear. And I mean, uh, if you look at Israel, for example, where everyone is uh, vaccinated, so to speak, uh, sixty-one percent in the ICs are double faxed people. They are double vaccinated, and uh, that is 61% that enters the ICs, right? And uh, you see similar numbers in other uh, countries where, where, where the ICs are, are being uh, filled up by vaccinated people. Um, yeah, so, so, so let us debunk it right away. It is pure propaganda talk to talk about that the hospitals are flooded with people who are not vaccinated. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is yeah, yeah, that's complete right. bullshit. Uh, the, the reality is, and I think the MHRA has uh, good reports, I like them better than Israel, um, the, the variants of concern, but also the, the COVID-19 vaccine report, uh, look it up, uh, it's on the website, I would actually say they are more open to their data and to their source data, to the models they use, um, you can clearly see 
the jabs do not have any effect. Maybe they have some negative effects of side effects or, or a dampening the immune system so you, beca you become more susceptible. And that, I would say, uh, wanes over time. And now there's a whole talk about the effectiveness uh, waning in five or six months. This is rubbish. This is just trying to find a solution or f find an explanation. These shots never worked, will never work. And they knew it from the start. The whole clinical trials uh, are a farce. They did not measure COVID-19. They measured a positive test with some kind of symptom when they knew that the prevalence of uh, COVID-19 in the summer was virtually zero. So there's absolutely no proof. And if you go to the absolute risk reduction, they show something around 1%. And that could be it, could not be it. So the only effect we have seen up until now is not from the jabs, it's just seasonal effects, mutation of the virus, um, uh, the, uh, the diseasing or uh, dying of the people who are frail, and the increase in herd immunity by natural infection. Those are the real effects that they try to keep out of these models, but it is, for every scientist, crystal clear what are the real effects and what are the, the 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 invisible enemies and we have to bring sacrifices if we do not do enough if we do not take enough injections if we do not adhere to these restrictions we have to be punished and and this is very similar to to the middle ages and and the christian church yeah yeah but that that's uh, that already started with uh, when, when they started Forcing to force people to wear masks, right? Um, the the masks uh, the people were wearing, they were not. They weren't, those weren't medical masks. Those were just uh, uh, basic masks no, that so, didn't protect so you at all. It was a religion. Yeah. yeah. Also, for the masks, it's clear the three goals of wearing a mask is a visual cue that there is still a crisis. Mm. The second one is impeaching your freedom of speech, and I think that is the the main topic f uh, of tonight. So. Uh, wearing a mask in public, wearing a mask to court, wearing a mask to deliver a speech in parliament, etc. It has a very specific psychological meaning. You are not allowed to speak. Don't dare to speak against the system. But then a third, and that is about health, is actually that now it has been proven that masks have a negative effect. They cause... Um, uh, periodontitis uh, or um, or caries so the the environment in your mouth and in your upper respiratory tract are negatively influenced uh, you're more prone to bacterial or fungal infections um, which can cause uh, myocarditis uh, but also uh, pneumonia and this keeps the, the the steady flow especially in the flu season of people that are already in frail condition uh, that keeps the steady flow of the going to the hospital uh, and in that case it is a purely artificial uh, crisis yeah and it is interesting that uh i was just double checking it real quick is that even on the o official website of the rivm right it, it talks about uh, uh, medical masks and it says uh, as a guidance for uh, healthcare professionals that you can wear a mask for a maximum amount of three hours and after that it is uh, unhealthy to wear it and this is on the R rivm side um, yes so, so about about these institutions now what i feel is that a lot of people working there are not happy no. they 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 are seeing that it is going the wrong way and that we are ending up in a in a dictatorship it's a bit late to wake up now but i gladly welcome these people because what is happening all around the world people signed up not to torture other people people signed up to have a job and to do what they like to have a feeling that they add to society um, to have a, to have a standing as a scientist or as a doctor, uh, not to be part of a neo-communistic uh, dictatorship. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course. I think the, most of the employees there they actually started working there because they wanted to do something good, right? And then it turns out they're being Absolutely. used by these by a few people in power 
to f much different yeah. reasons. Yeah. Um, hey, but you, you, we, we mentioned that this, this is about free speech too, right? And I saw y you posting some updates on like Instagram and stuff that you are having difficulty when people even try to add you now on social media, right? And yes. Uh, so we had a, a live today about the, the the Facebook court case that I had last week. Um, there's a few angles to it. So Facebook is monopolizing uh, their standing in social media. Uh, they also acquired WhatsApp, Instagram, um, and they're trying to to rule social uh, uh, social media world. Um, now, what happens with me? I have a, a personal account. I have a, um, a dance account uh, as an artist. Uh, and I have that same on Instagram. But when I'm striked on one of the four accounts, all of them are blocked. Okay. So they're clearly misusing their, their position. And what you mentioned is, uh, is, is called shadow banning. And you see that in, in five or six different ways. So people are not allowed to find me. Uh, they're not allowed to tag me. They're not allowed to like anything or to make comments about it. Um, they're asked if they want to keep following me because I've been caught spreading misinformation. Um, th these kind of shenanigans are, are going on constantly, uh, trying to keep the influence of, uh, of my voice or, or, or the message as small as possible. And um, it, it's very clear, and this is one of the tactics, eh? the other one is just uh, outright uh, blocking me for instance linkedin has banned me for life i cannot get an account anymore um and, and this is this is really the the holy inquisition in that sense the ministry of truth yeah. they tell us what the truth is and if you find something that goes against their truth then you're thrown off and and i have this article 10 of the european treaty for human rights um, Article 10, and, and, and that, that makes it so um, sinister. Mm. Uh, not many laws were changed. Laws were interpreted to meet an end. This is what Facebook is trying to do. This was one of their lines of defense. So Article 10 is about freedom of speech or freedom of thought. Um, so in the second part you have sub one and sub two it and this is normally what uh, when you're talking about uh, uh, basic human rights then the first part is the enabling part and the second part is normally the 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 thing that um not prohibits it but limits it so the limitation on the freedom of speech is that it comes with the responsibility to keep um society safe so then there's uh, four or five things that uh, come into question is uh, national safety territorial integrity um, the public safety or the public order um, illegal deeds or illegal facts um, uh, good norms good uh, and um, and the protection of the rights of others. Uh, and then, of course, the uh, protection of the health of the public. And of, this is become a euphemism. We do this for ihre Sicherheit. Then I'll translate. We do this for your safety and security. And this is exactly what the guidelines of Facebook are now based upon. Not only Facebook, but Twitter does it, of course, Instagram being a subsidiary of Facebook does it, uh, LinkedIn does it, YouTube does it. It's all for your safety. We take away your freedom of speech because you go against our truth and our truth is for your safety. And that's, that's basically the end of the story you will ever have with the moderators of, of Facebook or any other social media platform that colludes uh, with governments. Uh, uh, that is also very clear. They make um, in the Senate hearings in the United States, but also in our uh, Parliament, uh, uh, it, they admitted that they made um, they made deals or they made a, 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 a voluntary cooperation to um, make the guidelines 
uh, in co confluence with policy of um, institutions like the WHO and the Dutch state, the European Union, etc. Yeah, when you mentioned the WHO, yeah, I would say like the, these sites actually collaborate with people uh, who are perhaps even more powerful than governments. Because look at the example in the past with uh, president with, with a U.S. president, right, <laughs> Donald Trump. He was completely removed from Twitter. He, he, he apparently said something they didn't like either. Uh, or there was another reason, but uh, so so there is something going on there, and that is probably a force that is, that is even above governments. Uh, I, don't want I, I, I don't know if it's above governments. So what is originally fascism? That is the, the corporate world uh, merging with uh, uh, with uh, the policy world, with uh, with politics. Now, if we look at uh, the f one of the, the first cases was Mussolini in Italy, and there he was the strong man and merged, so he nationalized all industry. But then, of course, came nepotism, and he appointed the leaders of industry his inner circle. And this is what is very normal in dictatorships. By the way, uh, fascism, uh, also national socialism, is coming from the left. Eh? It's, it's, uh, it's a socialist idea. Uh, driven to uh, a leadership cult. I think that is the, the, the easiest way to, to explain fascism. So what we are seeing now, and this is uh, one of the famous speeches of uh, Dwight Eisenhower, I believe, in his farewell speech, he warned people against the, um, what was it? The military industrial complex. Yeah. And that is exactly that. He called it another name, but that is what fascism is. Now, if you go further, and today I saw a very good speech of Putin. And Putin, Putin spoke out against uh, the woke culture. And in, in, a, in an indirect way, he reprima reprimanded the free world, United States and Europe, for falling into the same trap that his country fell in in 1917 with the Bolshevik uh, revolution. Because this has all been done. The, 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 the zeal and the goal to, to reach a, a complete equality uh, under uh, the, the social or the socialist banner. And now we call it um, um, the LGBTQ community, for instance, that uh, you have to have equal, equal rights. Uh, the, the BLM, Black Lives Matter, it, it sounds like the, the original ideal that you want equal opportunity and, and equal value for all human beings, that sounds wonderful. The problem is that these NGOs and clubs, we were mentioning uh, WHO, but also the WEF uh, and some other of these organizations are trying to create uh, a new way of living together, which is very similar to a hive colony, like ants, wasps, bees. But this is not human nature. And this is why communism worked in the kibbutz when you have a small organization and does not work for something as big as a state, let alone a world government. It will fail completely. Yeah, of course. Because it is like it is part of the human to, to want to be free and make their own decisions and not... Uh, first deliver everything to the state who then decides who gets what and who then equally uh, exactly that that's not exactly. human nature no human nature is to have a certain amount of autonomy so our yeah. our basic um our basic biological social structure is the individual and especially in the in the west in the free world we have put that individual on a pedestal now what is happening for instance, when we look at other dictatorships uh, or less free countries, uh, especially China, where they still uh, have a, so a sort of communism with uh, not a completely free market, but a market system in it. There's, there's a lot of uh, reasons why it works in China and, and why they cannot let it go. It has a lot to do with the wealth distribution if you look to the east of the country and the west of the country. Um, but what I feel is that this cultus, the last uh, 30 years since the collapse of the Soviet Union, 
has been looking at China and seeing the the success they had with these state-driven programs, forgetting that until the 80s it was an atrocity and that Mao is responsible for most casualties of any leader, more than Genghis Khan, more than Stalin, more than Hitler. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, but then the Chinese state started to, to compete and now took over. I mean, there's no question about uh, the strength of the of the of the industrial economy of china it's 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 it far exceeds any country in the west now i think that a lot of thinkers in the west uh, started to reevaluate the the pedestal the individual stood on and what is very different in 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 Asia and especially in East Asia is the is the family structure um, that made it that might have made it more suitable for a more communistic system because even if you look to Korea or Japan, these are market economies, but they are planned market economies. These are very big companies which work together inside and around the government. There is not a clear line between the, these these big like Zaibatsu and other companies um, and the state, and this has always been like that. So it, it might be that that these countries have have a tendency to be more totalitarian, um, because the individual has never been on that pedestal as it has been in the West. Now, we can we can debate uh, whether that is a conscious choice but what we're seeing now is an attack on the individual and it sounds strange because we are trying to have these emancipation waves of um, uh, rights for women rights for refugees uh, rights for children rights for uh, gender uh, rights for every every attribute every marker of identity has to have equal rights but that is on a very, very superficial level. And if you go to the more fundamental questions, and that is about autonomy, that is about ideology, uh, that is about uh, whether you want to have a lot of uh, influence from the outside, whether it is a community or the state or whether you want autonomy. These fundamental questions are not allowed in uh, in the in the public debate no and in the case for china well you can debate that too are people actually uh, willingly submitting to that or is the government actually uh giving them some kind of surrogate for it like because they have such Absolutely. a huge wealth increase for example and they're now getting access to these uh, luxury products which are created in their uh, their, their factories and there is this uh, illusion of getting more free choice by being able to choose these different uh, phones, being able to choose different cars, and are they f falling for that illusion too? Is the government using that to have this whole illusion of freedom? Absolutely, so but kind of like what we're doing here too, by the way. Yeah, yeah. So the illusion is that somewhere else in the world is better, and that you want to reach that state. Now, in Europe, until the 90s, we had that illusion with the United States. Because we had two examples. We didn't want to be like the Soviet Union because those people were poor. But the United States, those people were rich. They had a car, they had a TV, et cetera, et cetera. And for a lot of people, that meant status, that meant wealth, that meant um, uh, getting ahead in life. Now, uh, once that fell away, uh, I would say the West uh, came in an identity crisis. What was the next step to strive for? And in that, uh, in that emptiness, um, some entrepreneurs and, and some opportunists uh, took it on themselves to, to change the world and to go to a one world government system, uh, which is based on surveillance and control. Yeah, at some point in time, they started becoming obsessed with, with the data of people too. That's kind of like... They they started this whole uh, surveillance system from 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 the government side, uh, the mm -hmm. wiretapping, tapping your internet connections, and then also from the commercial side, gathering all this information about you from uh, Facebook, Twitter, whatever, 
uh, ads on every different site and they're now combining this in this huge system adding uh, the digital money system to it like every transaction is is registered uh, your travel is registered especially in the Netherlands with OV uh, cards and stuff everything is is digital digitally connected now and then you have to know the QR uh, thing uh, it's with the QR uh, yeah, uh, with the digital identity with the digital wallet uh, with the electronic addition to your passport all the, the the building blocks are there for a social credit system and yeah. let's not kid ourselves once it is possible it will be used and the government without oversight will always misuse it there is n there is none exception to that rule yeah of course yeah, if, if you, because if you don't stop them they will i mean uh, there is a money to be made there is power there and they 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 real they realize there is the power there so they will use it unless you stop them this is yeah. exactly and the, and this is um a good government is a government that fears its citizens a bad government is a, is a government that is feared by its citizens it's uh, a small change in the phrase but that is exactly what is happening and now what we are seeing hap uh, is is happening uh, are rights that are being squashed um a lot of people start fearing the state and uh we can end it we can end it in a day if we all stand up and say it's enough we stop but the illusion of where power resides and then i think of the um, of the discussion between uh Varys and littlefinger from the hit series uh game of thrones yeah they have yeah. this whole discussion where power is power is power or power is where people think it is and on the short term power is power of course when there is a, a monopoly on violence uh, by the police uh, you cannot just win from that but on the long term power is always with the people and the only uh, way we can be controlled is if we are made to believe that power is outside of us and that is the the whole trick and power is where people think it is and people right now think it is with the government and in reality um it's a self-fulfilling prophecy if we think it is there then we surrender our sovereignty we surrender our autonomy and then indeed it is there until we take it back and we cannot take it back without a fight and i'm and i don't mean a physical fight but i mean a fight of getting or becoming autonomous again that means that we have to build infrastructure, own schools, own communication, uh, own healthcare system, own payment system, our own economy, uh, our own uh, lines with farmers and, and uh, food supply. And then you break the power of the government. Once a big enough mass um, becomes really autonomous and uh, has... Uh, wrestled free from the from the, the the totalitarian grip of the state then it collapses and the beauty of of these kind of overturns is that you already have the new system in place you already have a safe haven you already have an alternative to this dystopian future yeah uh all these things do exist in some way whether you look at uh, cryptocurrency or uh, uh, growing your own food all right it's possible already and you actually the door is also opened by with energy right if you you, you can you can put your own solar yep. panels on and you can share this power also in a sense uh, with others if you have a, if you have exactly. a large enough space you can share the solar power power with your with your neighbor with the smaller space yeah it's possible yeah, so already. to begin with autonomy and we will give a lot of classes the coming few months of course take care of yourself if that unit is not functioning nothing will happen then love your family because that's your emotional buffer but also your 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 physical buffer in that sense those are the people normally that you can rely upon most um and then build a community and from those communities you can start organizing you can uh each carry your own weight. You don't have to do the same thing, but if, for instance, you take care of uh, of the currency, then I can take care of the media, etc. And then you build these these autonomous networks that you connect to other networks. And if that goes on long enough, 
you create a system which is autonomous. And and you mentioned uh, cryptocurrency, and I think you you cannot go without blockchain in that in that sense because that uh, makes it by the people of the people. Um, if you give it away again to a central power that arranges it, you're back in the loop. You're out of your autonomy. Yeah, yeah. And it is many, many people are scared about uh, like what, what cryptocurrency does, their real value and everything. It's about trust. And if it's actually being used by people, uh, that's what it's based on. It, the currency that's being printed by governments only has value because people trust it's, it's worth something, right? They accept it because they know oh, I can buy something from someone else with it because he trusts it has value. Absolutely. But it's pretty much it's worth less than toilet paper, right? In the, but in reality but yeah you you attach trust to it and that's the same as with crypto it becomes large enough it becomes actually used you, you can use it to buy things then yeah that, that it will so i would advise people to spread their investment or their uh, reserves in a few areas of course uh, real estate and and uh, land is still very useful because um with land you can build your own food with real estate it will always be needed because people need a roof over their heads. Yeah. Then, yeah. of course, to give yourself options, I would also uh, uh, retain uh, one or two bank accounts uh, so you can function in the, the old world uh, for all the things that you are not being coerced. Um, then maybe invest something in, in, in uh, cryptocurrency and uh, maybe invest something if you have something to spare in, in gold or silver because that is um, the universal uh, rare rare earth metals that have proven their value or their their usefulness uh, over thousands of years yeah, literally. Um, and, and in the, in that tradition there is a lot of value and a lot of knowledge and a lot of wisdom so if you if you try to divide um, then you also create options and i would say creating options is a fundamental part of autonomy hey, you're right uh so you guys are giving you're going to give classes on this too uh absolutely so where, where would yes. people be able to find these classes i mean how, how can they uh, attend uh, that so it will be uh, Zoom sessions again uh, via uh, Balance in Your Mind uh, and Army of Love and uh, Fear is Waarheid. Um, and it will be mainly about uh, social topics, psychological topics, um, uh, how to grow your own food, uh, entrepreneurship and, uh, and legal matters. Um, so all these topics will be once a month and we collect a lot of questions uh try to answer them and we also have some uh interactive uh sessions so people can uh have a discussion and and talk about this and with that we hope to trigger something which is really needed uh, what we see is that the the, the thumb screws are being screwed on we started this program with uh, mentioning austria and romania but many other countries will follow that they will they will put measures in place that uh, will hurt the uninjected un people the hardest. And that is just to push everybody to the new system. They know that the jabs don't work. And of course, there are complications. People die from the jabs. People die from, uh, from uh, uh, airway or, or um, the respiratory infections. Um, but that is small change. And I don't mean to denigrate or, or play down uh, personal uh, uh, tragedies but the real reason why this is happening is is then you have to zoom out to levels this is going to a social credit system that is about surveillance and control that is about uh, squeezing the last bit of autonomy out of you and yes all these changes come with a price and our our leaders have already accepted that maybe one percent, probably a little bit less, will die in this transition. That that is, that is a price that they already were willing to pay, and it sounds very very hard, but I don't know if 
if it is possible to do or, or to change that outcome. The only thing we can do, and then we go back to those first four steps, take care of yourself, love your family, form communities, connect those communities. There, there you have offense and defense in, in the same system. Trying to save every person that is uh, frail or that uh, is not able to fight for themselves, that reminds me of uh, rescue swimming. So if you do rescue swimming, the first thing you learn is to always put the one you try to rescue be between you and the rock. So if you hit the rock, uh, maybe that person loses consciousness, but you stay conscious because you have a job. If you cannot save yourself, you definitely cannot save the other. Sure. And, and that is uh, the hard reality. Uh, people will die. Hey, and so uh, what about the North European countries, like uh, in Scandinavia? Do you expect they will like continue uh, uh, making so it easier? Or, or are they just waiting for the so-called new wave or something and they're just going to cut down everything again? Or do you, how do you feel about that? Yes. So to have a quick answer, yes, they will increase measures. Uh, I don't believe they will be as strict as the other countries, but this is something that I mentioned last year already. It has a lot to do with the war on culture. And there's a, there's a war on cash, a war on joy, and a war on culture. Now, if you look at the preferred culture, the Scandinavian countries are very close to it already. They are uh, uh, very... Um, group thinker much group thinkers eh? if you look at scandinavia it has always been a more a planned economy more social than other countries in uh, in europe um the the people there are uh, very obedient to authority and what they normally use is only the the guilt and shame system so they don't need a, a lot of strong measures however everything is an open place so i talked to people in sweden and they were also clubbed uh, when they rose up and had uh, demonstrations against the restrictions so it will be a very interesting time um, if they reach a critical mass of people not wanting to go in a lockdown again then we might see uh, also stringent lockdowns in scandinavia but that might topple the whole thing because that would be a big outrage. Yeah? Like in Holland it is already, but we are used to uh, 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 the world champion of lying. Our, our prime minister, Mark Rutte, is of course the biggest liar ever. And I think that would, that is less accepted in Scandinavia. So it, it's, it's very interesting what would happen there. Okay, yeah, yeah that makes sense. So uh, we, we were talking about freedom of speech. Right? I wanted to add, uh, just real quick, I wanted to add freedom of expression to that too, right? Because you said freedom of speech and freedom of thought. But actually, I noticed you you, you post a lot of uh, yeah, memes and pictures too, right? It's expressing your thoughts, not just in, in, in words, but also in, in, in imagery, in, in art, which in art is historically very yes. powerful in activism, right? And, and absolutely, absolutely, with humor and disgust, those are the two winning emotions humor and disgust so and this is what satire means yeah. humor and disgust so if you look at uh, the guidelines of facebook they actually say well in these harsh times we even think satire is more important so you should always be able to express yourself through humor and satire which is of course enormous empty phrase because I posted uh, a lot of uh, humor and satire and I got banned for it where it was very very clear that it was humor or satire this picture of the the storming of uh, of of the capital in um, in the United States the 6th of January this year there was a, this uh, Lego uh, uh, image as if you could buy this uh, this game of Lego or this uh, these these cubes it, and it uh, that was banned. That was banned because it would incite violence. And then you think, okay, this is, this is, complete rubbish. It is very clearly a joke. And um, yeah, so now we we don't only have the ministry of truth, but also a ministry of of silly jokes. Yeah, 
Yeah, I don't See that's and that's the thing. Like you, ca you can't even be satirical anymore. And uh, especially in America, for example, it used to be the comedians who were able to take it much further than others by by uh, actually making very strong statements. And, and just because it was done in a in, in a funny way, they were able to pretty much say anything. And so it makes sense that they would come at at that first because they feel a threat there. Yes. And 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 it is clear. It is a threat, of course. Um, if you, I think it was Noam Chomsky, and and he is one of the leading intellectuals in the United States. However, he was not so smart uh, to see to see through this. Yeah, I, I think now he's everything. catching up. But uh, one of the sayings or one of his quotes is that um, dictatorship uh, is uh, is typical. Uh, in the West, that it enables a lively discussion uh, about a lot of um, a lot of things on a very small area, uh, but outside is not allowed, and that's exactly what's happening. Yeah. I mean, this whole discussion with, that we have with identity has nothing to do with real life problems. These these are imaginary problems. I mean, I am all for the emancipation of every man woman and child and even animal if you want to throw that in the mix but that is not about what what is at at stake here now no no it isn't and it's like uh no, i'm thinking like if that like we used to work with like for in uh, like uh, as hack, uh, activists in uh, anonymous collective we used to do with me we w used to work with memes all the time right and memes are very powerful even if they're very simple basic uh well, actually, the people in power do that too. They use these simple one-liners to keep people under control. Like, yeah, you get facts now, or you stay safe and get facts. They did used to do it with the, the war on terror and that stuff. Uh, they use these simple one-liners, and actually, like when you do the same thing, you have these memes with simple statements, a funny picture, and whatever. It 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 really people share it. They understand it quickly, and it is a very powerful method. But I'm I'm wondering how do we defeat this if they even start like messing with that. Because that, I mean, it's it's just another route. The route, uh, it's a highway. Let's let's say that media and social media are highways because you can reach a lot of people very quickly. So they they block the highways, but there are still the country roads, and yeah. the country roads are getting out there. And this is why I say, build communities, connect those communities. If we start printing again, and handing out leaflets not by the hundreds but by the thousands or the ten thousands this is not something they can stop no and i think we discussed that too this, in the previous episode we had there are yeah this yeah this this saturation of the same content in the media and social media it it wears people down and that is that is one of the reasons why they do it but it also um disengages a lot of people people that are aware that something is not correct will start looking and they will follow the breadcrumbs and 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 not the lies so i'm i'm not so worried about uh cutting off uh, social media or or uh, the internet we will find ways to communicate and and let's be honest 99 percent of the of the information we need is already out there it is just uh, completing the indictments for the court cases for all the perpetrators but the 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 information that we need to to show that this is a scandal a scam a heist a coup is already there it's the, we have packages um uh, of of paper already we don't need the internet anymore true true well look i was never really worried about people like uh, you or, or myself who are actually uh, experienced at uh, gathering information and, and or active in the activism world for for some time like but i'm more worried about like the normal people who just watch their uh, regular tv and uh, they they don't really care too much they just want to go to work and they want to go back home and whatever yeah, but so if it's if it hurts enough they will start looking around for other options and and we have to be there i mean there's a saying in Dutch uh, that the, the lie can be uh, very fast, uh, but the truth will always catch up. Yeah. And I would add one sentence to that. Only if people speak out. So 
keep speaking out. That is the most important job we have. We have to keep speaking out. Do not fall in the trap of polarization. So is that you start pointing out the bad people. That is a job that I've taken up on myself, but it has a very specific strategic meaning. But finding scapegoats, that is the diversion. Keep telling the truth. Keep asking questions because we are not fighting against tyranny. We are fighting for the awareness of the public and of the, of the hearts and minds of the people. Yeah, I think that is... Uh I know you don't have much time left. Uh, I think that is a good uh, thing to end with. We are actually fighting for the awareness. and We need a paradigm shift, right? We need uh, a shift Absolutely. in thinking. Yes. Um, yeah, so, yeah, what they have been dealing with, they have been pushed in this constant fear and it is by repeating it in different ways. And like you're saying too, uh, we have to repeat the truth in different ways too, by using like paper, uh, papers, flyers, uh, uh, we have the internet, we have every uh, every possible method we can think of we should use, I think, to also repeat the truth in, in a similar way as they've been doing it with these lies. And Absolutely. Maybe Absolutely. It, yeah. Yeah. And now is really the season to sit back a bit, to work on our autonomy, uh, to keep repeating what we already said, and uh, I, I welcome the, the measures because it will wake up a lot of people. If people are not pressed, if they are not hurting, uh, then they, are, they don't have any um, drive, they don't have any ambition to change. Okay, so I have one more question. Do you believe there will be a European Spring? Yes, yes, I believe that. There will be a European Spring and it will coincide with the spring of 2022. Okay. Well, I think that is hopeful. Okay, and okay, and how can uh, people uh, uh, find you and follow you? Um, well, my, my name, Willem Engel, but uh, vswaarheid.nl or uh, videowaarheid.nl uh, there they can see all the articles, the court cases, the, the movies we made out of that and uh, I think that is a good starting point. Then you can uh, sign up for the newsletter and you can become uh, part of the community. Hmm. Um, oh, yeah. And uh, on the 7th, there is a major protest in, uh, in the Netherlands. I think that is... Uh, yes. So I hope to see people there. Um, and every time I still see a lot of new people. The seventh, we, we try to do every first Sunday of the month. So we had September, October were massive. I think September was around 100,000 people. I mean, the media says something else, but people just look at the pictures. It's very clear. Yeah. Then uh, on the 3rd of October, we had, I think, between 20 and 30,000 people in, in, the, in the pouring rain. It was still very big. And uh, I expect this one to be as big as the 5th of September or even bigger. And it is uh, very helpful that we have our, our, our least popular comedians, Pepe and Koki, also uh, the former prime minister and the former minister of health, uh, having a press conference just a few days uh, before that, uh, where they undoubtedly uh, will say, uh, well, the numbers are going up. Uh, it was too soon to uh, alleviate restrictions, so we have to get some restrictions back. It is the, the, the fault of uh, the people who are not unvaccinated, so the, the restrictions have to be hardest for them. That, that is basically their speech that we will give. And I hope that a lot of people will feel empowered by this speech and will come to The Hague to march for freedom on the 7th of November. Yeah. And so if you are listening and you, are, you, you happen to be vaccinated and you are, are, are convinced that this is all uh, very dangerous to not vaccinate or whatever, we're talking about human rights here. Like there shouldn't be a difference between unvaccinated and vaccinated. Like it is your own choice what you do with your body. And actually, if you are vaccinated too, I think you should be there too and defend the human rights of, of those who have a different choice than you have. Absolutely. Thanks, uh, thanks, Willem, for being with us. If there's anything left you want to say... Uh, uh, that was it. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. We'll talk soon. <laughs>